right, so we're just going to jump right into the demo of this foundation first because I feel like I have a lot to say about it. Um, and then I'll talk about it. So I'm not going to say too much apart from like price and how many colors and, you know, amount and stuff like that in the demo. So I've already primed my face and I've corrected my under eyes. So let's get right into the foundation. So today we're talking about the Philosophy Hope in a Jar Skin Tint. Now, if you're not familiar, Philosophy does have a Hope in a Jar moisturizer. I'm pretty sure they have like a Hope in a Jar serum. I don't know. I'm not really familiar. I don't use their skin skincare, but I do know that that's what they were trying to do with this. They're trying to merge whatever the claims for the Hope in a Jar are into a foundation or a foundation product per se. So it's the Renewed Hope in a, Hope in a Jar. Woo! I'm already not speaking correctly. Hope in a Jar Skin Tint. <clears throat> It is a whipped water gel, broad spectrum SPF 20 sunscreen. So it comes in a jar. I mean, it's named Hope in a Jar. So, you know, it only makes sense that it's going to be packaged in a jar. This packaging we'll get to later. But it is an actual gel formula tint. I mean, it looks like a moisturizer. And, you know, I think one of their claims is that it's as easy to apply as a moisturizer. It says it's blurring the lines between makeup and skincare. Powered by nature, H2O, and Wuzu Yu fruit extract. This whipped water gel formula offers the all-day hydration and glow benefits of Philosophy's Breakthrough Renewed Hope formula. Plus the buildable coverage of a foundation for flawless-looking skin with a healthy, shine-free glow. Each shade has been masterfully mixed to a wide range of skin tones. Now, I think they add that because there are only five shades in this formula unfortunate but true and I, so I think that they add that each shade has been masterfully mixed to flex to a wide range of skin tones to kind of cover themselves the fact that they you know only have five colors so I'm in the color five and a half which is also called beige it's currently out of stock on Ulta's website but they also carry this at QVC on Sephora lots of different places this retails for $39 and it is the standard one ounce now, I've had quite a few of you ask me about this product but ever since I hauled it because I think most people's concern is the application of it. Ulta website says to apply a small amount to clean dry skin just as you would your daily moisturizer. Philosophy suggests a dot on your forehead, cheeks, chin, and nose to start and build for more coverage. It does not say whether or not to use a sponge. It does not say, you know, whether to use your hands. I don't have the box anymore, so I don't know what the box says. But I'm going to use my spatula to get out just for sanitary purposes. And I'm going to show you how much I get out. Now, I'm not going to use this like my moisturizer because then I would not be able to use a separate SPF. And SPF 20 is just not enough, in my opinion. So, this is how much I'm going to start with. That's the color beige. And I start by applying with my fingers. So, just put a little bit on this. And I put it in like I would a moisturizer. Now, is this the only way you're going to be able to put it on? Do you get the finish that you want and the result that you want with just your fingers? Maybe, but I don't. I'm going to have to go back in with a sponge. But this is the first kind of step that I put down. So I do rub it in with my fingers. I'm not so concerned with the fact that there's going to be streaks because, like I said, I'm going in with a sponge. This is just my first layer. So I do like to get the base down, though, because you will find that when you do or when I do go in with a sponge, I don't, there's not a ton of work to do. Okay, so here's the kicker. I have used all that was on my hand. I don't have a ton of stuff to cover, and I don't really require a lot of coverage. However, I'm going to need more than what I put on my hand, so keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to put maybe half of what I started out with on the back of my hand, and I'm just going to use my sponge to kind of diffuse any lines and just add a tad bit more coverage on the areas where I'm the most red. So I'm first just going to start out by tapping away because in the forehead I don't need more coverage so I'm just going to kind of tap tap down any streak marks from my fingers that may be there especially around my brows so that's all I have to do on your forehead which is good because I'm pretty sure my forehead's cut off so good y'all don't need to see that I'm just going to add a little bit on my cheeks and then I just tap it in I do not swipe I don't swipe which is another reason that I don't really like a brush with this because it's so gel and so pliable that, and really so moisturizing that if you use a brush, it will just, I mean, it'll wipe away. It's just, it needs to be tapped in. 
Now, do I think that you could go straight in with a beauty blender and not have to do the finger step? step? Maybe, but I think you get more coverage when you use your fingers first. Um, some people are going to find that that's way too high maintenance. I'm going to try to touch on that too. Who has tips? Total side note. But who has tips for self-tanning your neck? Because I can't seem to do it correctly. All right. I'm going to, I zoomed you in a little bit. Um, I, as you can see, honestly, it's a sheer to light coverage. It dries down fairly quickly. I think that also depends on the primer that you use, which I will touch base on, of course. But honestly, like, this looks like really pretty skin. Like, it's evened out my skin. It looks like what a basic tinted moisturizer should do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up my makeup real quick. I'll come back and I'll tell you my thoughts. I'll tell you my day-to-day -day on this. I'll try to wrap it up fairly quickly, but I feel like I do have a couple things to say. So I'll be right back. All right, so let's talk about this foundation. This is what it looks like with everything put on top of it. And as always, I'm going to have everything that I used on my face, my eyes, my lips, everything listed and linked down below. But I'm just going to go over real quick um, kind of the products that I've used with it and what I think and stuff like that. Um, first of all, real quick, I used this for four days in a row that I actually took notes, but I used it for more than that in a row because I like it that much. Spoiler alert. Um, the first day, 15 hours. The second day, 13 hours. The third day, 13 hours. The fourth day, 15 hours. So, I mean, I wear my, I don't wear my foundation for like five hours at a time. If I'm going to put makeup on, I put it on at the very beginning of the morning and I wear it until the end of the night until I take my makeup off. I tried it with a YSL um, primer. I've tried it with just the Smashbox primer water and that was on a day that I forgot to use an additional primer. I've tried it with the Dr. Brent Pores No More, which is what I have on today. And I've tried it with the Becca First Light. I've tried it with the Chanel powder. I've tried it with the MAC Next to Nothing powder, which I haven't talked about much on this channel, but I do enjoy. Um, I've, I've tried it with the Urban Decay Loose Naked Skin Powder, which I have on today. And I've tried it with the Benefit Hello Flawless. Now, I've tried it using my fingers and then a brush. I told y'all in the demo why I didn't think that that was the best choice. So I continued to use it with my fingers and a beauty blender. These are the things that I noted down throughout the time, throughout the days that I tested it and took notes. It really does have awesome staying powder. Um, I, as you all know, if you've watched me for any length of time, in about three weeks I'm going on a cruise. I am, I kind of went on like a month diet because my goal is to get to my honeymoon weight, which is the last cruise that I went on. 10 years ago and I'm two pounds from that. So I'm kind of dieting a little bit and I'm changing up my workouts to be less on the weights and more on the plyometrics. So I'm saying that because when you do plyometrics in the gym, like you sweat. Plyometrics are not easy. And I did plyometrics this day. This is the day I worked for 15 hours. My liquid bronzer that I used that day came off with the sweat. Like there was not, like it was a line right here with like nothing. But this foundation stayed on. Like, I didn't even feel like I had to touch it up. I did note that it is just a, a sheer to light coverage. You might be able to build it up to a very, 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 very faint medium coverage. But you also are going to chance going into like cakey territory, which I know no one wants with their foundation. So I would stick with like sheer to light coverage, maybe light to medium. The second day is when I use the primer water and the next to nothing powder. And I wrote glow from within, not too much that I wanted to touch it up. It just looked like I was at the beach on a hot day. Who doesn't want to look like they're at a beach on a hot day? Like that to me is the epitome of beauty. It's like, you're not trying. You just look good. Honestly, isn't that what we pay for? To look like we're not trying. We just want to look good. So I, I wanted to note that. And I put in big parentheses or big letters and lots of stars around it that it doesn't even try to sink into your fine lines. It doesn't even try. Like it's not even attempting to. I tried a new foundation yesterday, which I liked everything about it, except that it did sink into my fine lines. This one does not. Like I have no sinkage in my smile lines after 15 hours of wear. The next day was the Dr. Brandt Urban Decay Powder, which is what I have on today. It was my all time favorite day. It was that type of day where you get in the car, it's like three o'clock in the afternoon, you're going to pick up the kids from school and you pull down the window to put some lip gloss on and you're like, holy cow, my foundation looks good. Like, 
you kind of just have that it really is like a glow from without stepping over the line into oiliness or shininess it does not look like you're shiny man it just looks like you've got really healthy really good skin or really minimal really good looking makeup on that's what I mean that's what I came across this day so that primer and that powder are the favorite combination that I've found yet now I I mean, I just put this on, so the glow is going to take a couple hours once everything settles down. But even now, I don't feel like I look cakey and like I have a ton of makeup on, at least on my face. I know I do on my eyes, but... Now, the, the fourth day was the Becca First Light Primer and the Benefit Hello Flawless. Um, this was the most glowy that I had throughout the day, which leads me to believe that it was the primer, the First Light Primer in the purple bottle, because... That definitely gives you a glow and so I feel like if you really um, don't want to be shiny I would stay away from any kind of luminous primers with this and just stick with like the regular silicone or like the primer water it looked great with that um, or something like the Dr. Brandt that's a little bit mattifying but definitely not luminous but I did tie bow on this day and for some reason my schedule only I had a client that morning or something so I couldn't do it in the morning which I normally do and so I had to do it in the afternoon. Well, I don't wash my face before I go. I just don't. And I sweat profusely at Tybo. And so I got in the car. And again, my like liquid bronzer was gone. But everything else, I was like, holy cow. It's not streaking. It's, I don't, it doesn't claim that it's water resistant. But it still looked good after Tybo. So I think my, my point is that if you want something that's super long wearing, that looks like skin that supposedly has skincare benefits this is going to be something you want to try out does it have a little bit of a high maintenance when it comes to application yeah because i don't think that you could just go straight in with a brush or straight in with a beauty blender and achieve the coverage and the look that i achieved today i do think you need to go in with your fingers first and then a sponge um is the packaging great no the packaging sucks like i cannot stand the packaging that's the only con to this product well there's two cons that's the first con and i wanted i didn't clean it off because i wanted to show you can you see because i use my fingers when i close the package it gets product all over it i didn't clean it off for that reason but it irritates me so bad and i'm so ready to wipe it off um the jar is not hygienic. I mean, use a spatula. Don't be sticking your fingers in there, even if you did just wash your hands. Uh, I don't think SPF 20 is enough to rely on just your foundation. I do suggest either a moisturizer with a higher SPF or a separate SPF in total. Um, I will say, I think this today was maybe the seventh time that I've worn it. Eighth, maybe the eighth. And you can see, you know, how much is gone. I do feel like you have to use a little bit more product than you would a standard liquid foundation that you pump out of a jar or a tube versus using the spatula out of this. I just, I think you just have to use more to get maybe the coverage and the finish that you're going to be achieving. So those are the only cons that I really find is the packaging and the fact that you do have to use a little bit more. Um, I guess I understand the packaging. I would be okay if they still called it Renewed Hope in a Jar Scar. Oh my heavens. I would be okay if they still called it Renewed Hope in a Jar Skin Tint and put that sucker in a tube. Like, I don't care what you call it. I get what you're trying to do, but give us a pump or a tube or something. Because that I, I don't like the jar. It does get messy. Um, but I am willing to deal with that because it's so pretty. It really is so pretty. I was amazed. I was not expecting to enjoy this as much as I did. The reviews are great, so I knew I was going to probably like it, but I really enjoy this. And honestly, I wholeheartedly believe that once this is done, I will repurchase, which I can only say for a few of my foundations because I have so many and I'm always trying new ones. But this is one that I'm going to want in my arsenal for quite some time. So... Hopefully that answered some of your questions. Um, I did tell you it doesn't sink into lines. It also does not accentuate pores. In case anyone's going to ask about that. So um, let me know if you've tried this and what your thoughts are. Try it out with the multi-application technique that I did. If you haven't already and let me know what you think. Um, and get it from either Ulta, Sephora, or QVC so that if you don't like it, you can send it back. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Be on the lookout. I am trying to change up my schedule to Monday, Wednesday, Friday instead of Monday, Thursday. It's kind of a little um, 
optimistic and probably stupid on my part considering wedding season is now in full full gear and I am I'm busy I'm busy kids are about to be out of school we're gonna be traveling like I'm I'm busy but I really just want there's so much I want to get out for y'all so be on the lookout for Monday Wednesday Friday videos like and subscribe if you haven't already and as always I hope you all have a very blessed day